Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let us go and start the second part of weaning. I think the problem of weaning, you have to, you have to ask yourself, why did you ventilate the patient? What is the cause of ventilating the patient? I think the objectives of mechanical ventilation are, number one, to unload the respiratory system. Number two, to replace the respiratory system. Number three, to adjust the APG. Let's go and see. First, to unload the respiratory system. Unload the respiratory system, this is uh, might be due to a decrease in the, in the neuromuscular capacity. The, uh, when we are dealing with the patient is having some problem for, is uh, cannot cope due to problem of the muscle, muscle of the nerve, something like that. So the patient uh, cannot do, the respiratory pump cannot do the job. That's why these carbon dioxide tensions are all these some sort of hypoxia. Or it increases after load, it's like the same, and the patient, the workload on the, on the, on the, uh, on the respiratory pump is large due to the spas, or due to the consolidation of the lung with the decrease in the compliance. So the power for the respiratory pump to do the job is a little bit difficult, and so there's some sort of fatigue and the respiratory failure will, uh, uh, will occur. Or or the preload. Sometimes the patient is having some sort of severe metabolic acidosis, so the respiratory pump cannot do the job to wash out carbon dioxide in order to adjust uh, the pH. That's why there is some sort of failure of this outside the uh, the, the the respiratory pump. So the uh, what we do is to unload the respiratory system to take the job apart from the job from the for, for, uh, apart from the job or to compensate or to, co uh, to a complementary to be complementary to the respiratory uh, bump this is number one number two the replace the function of the respiratory bump as in this case a patient uh, is dying uh, and under anesthesia muscle relaxants or, or the patient there is some sort of neuromuscular problem this mycini gravis botulism or snake poisoning all this will be associated with uh, muscle weakness uh, which cannot do the job or there is some sort of like uh, uh, and neuro, uh, neural uh, pathology like in Guillain-Barre syndrome. This is number one. Number two, the, th the third part is to adjust the ABG, to adjust oxygen or to adjust the carbon dioxide or to adjust pH back to the normal as I've mentioned before. Or in another way, I'm going to ask myself, what did you put the patient on the ventilator? This is maybe a problem in the respiratory system itself, neuromuscular problem or bronchopulmonary problem or something outside, as I've mentioned before. This is non-respiratory. It is the failure. It is the failure of the respiratory system to uh, uh, satisfy the requirement, the metabolic requirement of the body or to satisfy or to maintain the integrity or the medially of carbon dioxide, oxygen, and, and BH, like in the case uh, of metabolic as soon as I've mentioned, so, or heart failure, something like that. So the question why to win the patient? I think uh, uh, the the we win the patient because the respiratory uh, uh, the cause of respiratory failure which mandate ventilator support is already cured. So I have to win the patient, and at the same time the respiratory parameters, which is the neuromuscular and bronchopulmonary systems, uh, are now within the reserve reserve capacity above the failure threshold which resulted in a normal ventilatory controlled variable with normal blood gases what does it mean this means that uh, I, I, I why to win the patient yes because the data available now on the ventilator for me that the patient there which is uh, the control variables uh, which is the tidal volume respiratory rate oxygen fi2 all these uh, are within the uh, uh, the the normal range are uh, or in another way they are uh, the above the failure threshold since this uh, uh, here comes the question what is the failure threshold so the uh, in order to to do to do the job for the respiratory system because this respiratory function is endless. This is so what they say for for life, for long. It is it will not work. The respiratory system will not work for one one hour or two or one day or two and then stop. It will it, it will work for long. That's why the the the, the respiratory function there should be a reserve capacity and this reserve capacity should be high because the respiratory functions. This satisfy the metabolic demand of the body. At rest, uh, there is uh, a basal work 
when there is uh, when you when there is increase in the multiplier created by walking or by doing anything this is usually there is increase in the walk um, so there should be a, a reserve capacity and this reserve capacity should be high that's why there is a minimal a minimal value for the for the data this minimal value number one we are when we talk about the respiratory system i usually divide it into two things neuromuscular neuromuscular and bronchopulmonary neuromuscular this entails uh, the uh, the central nervous system the the uh, uh, the uh, respiratory centers uh, the respiratory nerves my neural junctions uh, and uh, the muscles and thoracic cage this is the pump or the neuromuscular system and when you come to the bronchopulmonary this is bronchial tree and the lung itself uh, and uh, we'll see how to test for that. So the respiratory, this is a respiratory center, or uh, 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 this is usually we check it for what we call the respiratory drive. Respiratory drive, this is uh, the uh, how much the firing of the impulses uh, come from the respiratory center uh, in order to uh, 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 to stimulate the respiratory pump to deliver the tidal volume. This is uh, usually we measure it in the form of uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the pressure exerted within the first 100 milliseconds, which what we call B 100 millisecond. So this is the respiratory drive. Normally, the respiratory drive at rest usually you make a pressure of about uh, one centimeter water. The maximum one usually about uh, four to six something like that this is a reserve a good reserve but if the patient at rest is doing uh, a large effort doing the uh, the b uh, 100 millisecond this battery drive is about three or four something like that this means that this is a basal there is no reserve capacity you cannot win the patient from uh, from the ventilator when the b 100 millisecond is large so this is a failure one he will he will take his breath for one minute two minutes uh, one hour something like that and after that he fails so this is a, a, a this is a lower limit we should take care when you do something like that when you when you when you win the patient that's why you can sometimes we can make a test by making making the, the patient breathing about three c uh, percent of carbon dioxide and see whether this uh, b1 100 millisecond will be the will be Doubled or not? If, well, if doubled, this means that uh, you uh, the patient is still having uh, a large reserve capacity and uh, his drive is still uh, uh, good. The second point, which is uh, respiratory nerves and my neural junction, this can be tested by the nerve conduction and uh, EMG, and this is not. Uh, a, a, a routine respiratory muscle pump this is the frag the respiratory muscle pump you can measure the diaphragmatic contractions and see whether this is, can make a 30 centimeter water or not this is if it is less than 30 centimeter water this is mean that uh, this is some sort of failure and this can be measured uh, by the artificial pressure Another important point for the respiratory pump, which is linked to respiratory force, and this needs a patient who is cooperative and uh, conscious in order to make a, something like that. If the patient is not conscious or cooperative, I think this is not uh, will not be easy. And so the linked to respiratory force should be more than 30 centimeter water in order to say that this patient uh, is having a good power for the um, vital capacity. Also the same thing, vital capacity normal about uh, 50, 65 to 75 ml per kilogram body weight, and this is the vital, vital capacity. But this also, it is not a practice. It needs also a patient to, to be cooperative. In the mission for this vital capacity, how can you do it? The patient will make an exhalation, complete exhalation to exhale, to exhale the expiratory reserve volume, volume, and after that, take a very deep inspiration. So, this is a vital capacity. And if the vital capacity predicted value should be more than 15% of uh, 15 ml per kilogram per weight. But this is also it is difficult if the patient is not cooperative and conscious. Sometimes the patient, uh, you put the patient uh, 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 and the patient is not cooperative or sometimes difficult. Uh, for the patient, uh, especially if a patient on coma and has uh, some sort of lung problem, put him a ventilator, and after, after that you win from the ventilator to a coma. This is not. This is uh, another issue. Minute volume also. Minute volume. This so should be less than one. Uh, uh, less. 10 from 6 to 10 liter per minute if it is more this means that the patient is hyper hyper metabolic state and therefore this is the demand or the load on the dispatch system will be high so expect, you expect that the system will fail
Rapid shallow breathing is another issue. For when the patient, when the respiratory rate increases, it's usual on expansion on the uh, uh, on the tidal volume because increasing the rate will be associated uh, with dynamic hyperinflations, increase in function of capacity, and accordingly the tidal volume will decrease. And this is uh, another important point. So you have to, to question yourself, to ask yourself, what are the, the respiratory rate? Uh, the, uh, in order to say how much the respiratory rate, I think it's better to uh, to calculate the exabat your time constant uh, and the from it you can uh, uh, you can define the maximum respiratory rate for this patient patient with uh, bronchial asthma or, or COBD and he is having some sort of spasm if you measure the expired time constant it would, be, it, would be, it would be large and accordingly the expected respiratory rate for this patient uh, will be less you say 20 the maximum rate will be 20 in this case if the patient is taking his respiratory rate about 15 it's good if the patient is, is, is taking his respiratory rate uh, 20 or more this means that it is difficult to win the this patient and in this case uh, the rapid shadow index uh, will be more than uh, 30 and at the same time it will be close to 100 and this is uh, not good you'll not be able to so this means that the patient is high stachypneic and at the same time the total volume is low oxygen cost this is uh, uh it's difficult to to measure uh, but uh, usual oxygen cost is about five cents, uh, f uh, less than five percent of the total oxygen consumption, which can be measured. But uh, uh, if the predictive value, if it is uh, larger than this, I think uh, this means the cost uh, for uh, for the oxygen consumption is high, and this is uh, make it difficult for you to win the patient. Sometimes uh, you find all the data, the total volume, respiratory rate, and everything is good. And when you when you uh, uh, win the patient, the patient stays uh, for one or two or three hours, and after that fail, they say they ask the questions: uh, What about the reserve capacity? It's difficult to, to measure. And or the second part: uh, What about the patient uh, is going to sustain this uh, respiration, this function for long without failure? So they said that uh, the sustainability or what we call the endurance of them. So a lot of uh, formulas have been developed to uh, say whether this is uh, or this patient will uh, continue without uh, without reintubation again or without failure again and they said that this is pressure time index which means the mean airway pressure over the uh, negative inspiratory force or pressure multiplied by the inspiratory time over the duty time this is a duty cycle this normal value is about 0.02 if the predictive value for failure if it is more than 1.15 this is another Bronchopulmonary system. This is usually when we uh, test for the bronchopulmonary system. Usually we measure the inspiratory resistance. The expiratory resistance should be measured, and this is a normal value. If it is large, it should that's the same like uh, especially the expiratory resistance in patients with COPD or bronchial asthma. In this case, uh, you, know, you have to take care that this is uh, may may uh, make a load on the patient if it is large, and the patient might fail. So you have to treat uh, uh, to treat it before you disconnect the patient or you liberate the patient from the mechanical ventilations. The most important thing also, which is compliance. Compliance, this is the patient that uh, came with ARDS, or the patient with pneumonia, or the patient with heart failure. On all these things, the compliance of the patient will be low. And if it is less than 33 millimeter mercury, it's 33 ml per centimeter of water. In this case, the patient, it is difficult to win the patient, uh, and you have to treat the underlying cause before uh, you liberate the patient from mechanical ventilations. Oxygenation index, which is uh, which means that uh, what about uh, the shunt and what about the alveolar gradient? Alveolar gradient should be measured, and this is uh, can uh, 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 this is alveolar gradient for the patients. This is a normal alveolar gradient should be like in the FiO2 multiplied by the age plus uh, uh, 2.5. And uh, if this uh, alveolar gradient the predictive value for very is uh, more than 30, 30, 300. Uh, 50 on, uh, on 100 uh, uh, percent auction or you measure you see this is the uh, the predictive value for uh, the uh, uh, auction if the bo2 60 with if i2 more than 35 or the predictive value for uh, uh, oxygenation index should uh, uh, this is a failure should be more than uh, 200, uh, this is oxygen index, uh, BO2 over, over uh, FiO2 in liters. This is uh, should be more than 200 because uh, if it is like this, this is mean uh, you are uh, 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 in uh, acute lung energy or 
or ERDS. This is uh, another value. So this is that uh, they should take care, the take care of the oxygenation index of the patient should be high, and at the same time, the elevator guidance should be low. And uh, uh, similarly, if the patient is uh, on FiO2 35%, uh, 35%, uh, the situation should be more than 90, and the uh, BO2 should be more than 60. So this is uh, very important uh, in order uh, uh, to uh, take, to say that, that the patient is vulnerable or not. Shunt also, they can, this shunt can be measured. Simply put the patient on 100% of auction and uh, calculate uh, the alveolar, uh, uh, alveolar pressure pressure of auction and measure the arterial and uh, uh, the two uh, and, uh, and apply this formula of R20. So this is, uh, we will give you the shunt. If it is uh, then 10%, this is normal. 10 to uh, to 19 percent percent. This is hypoxia, which is which is one to by two. If it is more, 20 to uh, about uh, 30. This means that uh, the hypoxia is not non responding to high FI2, will not respond uh, and need some sort of recruitment uh, and another management or prone position, something like that will not be winnable. If it is more than 30 percent, this means that it is life threatening uh, hypoxia. So this is a very important. But so a chance uh, easy to to measure at. Uh, after putting the patient on 100% oxygen and uh, from this formula you can uh, define how much the shunt of the patient. Back again to the uh, control variables uh, on the ventilator. If the, you should look at the control variable, which is the, uh, I have mentioned before, control variable. This is the physical character of the tidal volume. The tidal volume, how much the tidal volume, how much the flow, how much the FiO2, how much the rate. Uh, how this is uh, this data should be uh, uh, should be close to the normal tidal volume for this patient before you win it should be more than six mL per kilogram of weight. Respiratory rate, as I mentioned before, should be then should be low below 20 or you should calculate the uh, expected time constant and see how much the maximum for these patients and what about this situation should be below it and at the same time the minute volume should be should be less than from 6 to 10 liter per minute i think this is uh, an order to you should not uh, you should correct the metabolic state of the patient before uh, winning him otherwise this will make uh, uh, an afterload uh, on the respiratory bump. So the PEEP itself, uh, if you use the PEEP, the PEEP uh, should be around uh, seven uh, uh, centimeter water in order to say that this patient can be uh, uh, can uh, can be weaned off the ventilator. In addition to this, I have mentioned that uh, the FiO2 should be around if the FiO2 is uh, 35 uh, percent and uh, with the oxygen situation more than uh, 90, this is a good uh, uh, data for weaning. Uh, the patient.